There. We're live. We're there. Welcome. We are so excited to be here this morning and have you join us virtually. Um, yeah. This is a time, the preach is a time where Daniel gets to talk a lot. No, actually not. This is a time where we can actually give you some announcements. It's a chance for you to interact in the chat. We see a lot of that happening right now. So welcome, everybody. And Daniel. Yeah. And if you're uh, one of the hopes, our, our hope in our heart for everything we do at Horizon uh, is kind of twofold. Number one, we have this uh, a very firm conviction that one, Jesus is real. And two, that you actually have the ability to encounter the real presence of Jesus. And we believe that when you do that, it just changes things. It changes mm -hmm. your, your heart, it changes your most, it just changes situations. So today, as we jump to our online church experience, we're, our heart and our prayer, as my mask just keeps slipping down my face, uh, our heart and our prayer is that you would encounter the love of Jesus in a real way that would transform your whole life. And so we're just really excited for that today. Yes, and one of the ways that you can get the most out of your church online experience is to not commit to not multitasking. Now, mm -hmm. I know as So for all mom, the men out there, there should be no problem. <laughs> as a mom, I know sometimes this is a little harder, but what we found is, um, you know, worship for me has been a little hard to yeah. connect online through a screen. But what we've done in our home is Ellie gets a pretty dress on, we get them excited and encouraged, and then this is our opportunity to model and teach our children how to worship. Love and that. sometimes it just looks like dancing around in our living room while worship is happening, but Jesus loves that. Yeah, and it might look a little bit different, honestly, because sometimes it's great, hey, send your kids to kids' church, and then you can kind of focus in. Uh, but what a great opportunity just to model for those with kids. For those without kids, uh, I want to encourage you to, to do what you can to engage, whether that's turn the volume up, whatever that looks like. One of the other ways to not multitask that I found really helpful is actually to take notes during the message. Uh, they say, uh, you remember about 70% more of a message when you actually take some handwritten notes. Uh, and not only that, you have a chance to go back later in the week and, and look at kind of what God said. If you're new to taking notes, you can be writing down the slides on the bottom of the screen as Pastor Craig's speaking today. Uh, you can also be writing down like maybe thoughts that God gives you throughout the message. I really wanna encourage you, uh, don't just kind of sit there passively going between sports updates and church and oh, jumping back and forth. Let's really engage. And we got one more tip for how to get the most yes. out of your the online, online church, church experience. experience. Um, a great way is to set a reminder to apply a takeaway. So yeah. make sure you set a reminder, write down something that you can take away tangibly. And also you can share this. You can take somebody right now in the comments and that will show up on their notifications. So you can take somebody to watch with you and then connect after church and talk about it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I know I've done, especially with this Dangerous Prayer series, uh, the first week that Pastor Craig, he was preaching fire. And I actually sent that to a couple people. I'm like, hey, you got to listen to this message. And I'd love to talk about like what you thought about it after. And so that'd be great. But we have a couple of announcements. First we announcement. Do. We do. First, I have to say hi to Ellington because I saw that in the chat. Hi, Ellie. Um, but we are on our last day of 21 days of prayer and Wait, fasting. Does Vim wear a pretty dress too or is it just Ellie? You might want to ask him that. Vim, okay, cool. you can answer yeah. in the chat. Um, today is our last day of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Yeah. So if you've been with us, joining us on this journey, congratulations. We're on day 21. 21. <laughs> and I clearly don't remember. It's good math. Name. It's good math. Yeah, yeah. last day, 21 days. Um, it's 21. exciting. I'm so excited to actually eat food. Hey, oh. Yep. Um, yeah. If anyone else has been fasting, what have you been fasting? Maybe jump on, yeah. jump on the chats and let us know. What have hopefully you been it hasn't been church. Fasting? Yes. Uh, <laughs> if so, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Um, but as we go through, yeah, we'd love to just see what yeah. you've been fasting. We'd uh, love to. Yeah. We, and one of the things we really want to encourage you. Um, our church isn't a church that just prays during three weeks in January and maybe a week or two in September. We really believe that we're called to be people of prayer. Mm -hmm. So although prayer and fasting is done, uh, we have Tuesday prayer on Zoom, which is fantastic. I want to encourage you, email prayer at horizonchurch.ca uh, to get that link. And Thursdays, we're going to be continuing some lunchtime things on Facebook because that's been awesome. But really want to encourage you. I, I, I remember this one saying that's always stuck with me from when I was in college. It says, don't forget in the valley 
what God gave you on the mountaintop. So good. Which simply means during this time, we just believe that God's been speaking to you. God's been putting things in your heart and in your spirit to remind you of his goodness and to, to give you a promise for what's next. And let's not forget what God's been doing yeah. in this last 21 days as we move into the, the rest of 2021. Yes. Second announcement, we got Night to Shine coming up. Yes, we are so excited this year. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know what Night to Shine is, it's just an opportunity for us to love on people with diverse abilities. Um, we do it through the Tim Tebow Foundation. So they have a prom night. So we get to crown each and every individual that comes through our um, event as a king or a queen for the night. It's our opportunity to show people they are loved, they are valued, and we care about them. So we're excited. It's happening February 12th this year. Yeah, and it looks a little bit different this year. So Sharon, can you talk about how people can get involved and what the difference is? Yeah, so Princeton, hey Princeton, we are so excited for you guys to be joining us this time. We have um, a guest registered from Princeton all the way out to Surrey and Abbotsford and all across the Lower Mainland. Love that. Um, because this is virtual. So this is the first time, of course, with COVID and everything, this is the first time we're doing it virtual. So you can join us. You still have the opportunity to join us. And yeah, information is on nighttoshine.ca. Yeah, and uh, the sixth was one of the volunteers. We just want to say thank you. We have enough volunteers for the sixth and packing. Yes. So thank you for your response. But the drive-through uh, yes. happening uh, so on- So the drive through is happening on February the 11th. the 11th. That's a Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. Again, thank you to those of you who have signed up to yeah. uh, volunteer for the sixth. We are good. We have enough volunteers to deliver the gifts. But the 11th, that's our Shine Through drive through event happening. And we would love for you to be able to come join us and cheer on our guests. Yeah. And last announcement that we have, uh, women, all, all the ladies, not just all the single ladies, all, all the ladies. ladies. That's uh, right. We have a women's event coming up. You heard story on the 15th. That's a Monday night, not a Sunday night. Yeah. Uh, with the holiday, it's going to be the last evening of the Sunday. And that registration email the link for registering for that's coming out this week so be watching for that yeah so that is great. monday night february the 15th but we have some trivia we got some giveaways we do and uh we'll have two more giveaways at the post show because we're running out of time here but we're going to do the first bless you dab on the sneeze uh we're going to do the <laughs> first giveaway uh and it's valentine's day is coming up so it's kind of valentine's day theme so the first yes. question sharon why don't you read the first question Alrighty. so how many valentine cards are sent each year how many valentine's day cards are sent each year sent each year so it's coming up Wait for it so, here. So, Daniel, what are your plans for Valentine's Day while we're waiting for our... Katie hasn't told me what we're doing for Valentine's Day yet, so I'm still, oh, still waiting. Oh, 1.2 million? Nope, 1. Alexander, 2 million, not, not enough. quite. It's I mean, a little bit I higher than that, answer. actually. I don't want to give it away. No, don't uh, give it away. Ooh. No, nope, not it. 2 million. Close. Wait for it. 1.2 bill. Uh, oh. Oh, I, I, think I think that that may be, because was ours exact? Yeah. I think my ours may have not been exact, but that might have been it. Uh, we'll wait for, we're waiting for our answer. Uh, no, 145 million. That's how many Ben sends to his <laughs> wife a year, because Ben is the man. Two billion, a little bit too much, Malachi. Yeah. Good try, Care Polar. Oh, uh, you know what? 1.1. Okay, yep. Malachi, we're going to give it to it. you. Uh, yep. one, we had 1 billion. 1 billion, yeah. Greeting Card Association estimates that approximately 1 billion Valentine cards are sent worldwide each year. Yeah making it the second largest card sending holiday behind Christmas. Who knew? I did not know, that's crazy. So, and that doesn't take into consideration all of the handwritten cards from husbands that forgot <laughs> and do it on a piece of paper before, you know, just so it can be really good. So anyways, we're about to jump into worship. We're a couple seconds late, but hey, uh, we lost power or video at least. That's so true, we yeah. to make sure you had a full <laughs> 10 minutes of seeing my face. So anyways, we're about to jump into worship. It's gonna be a great time. We will see you at the post show. Uh, so yes. Malachi, Malachi, make sure you email, email Daniel at horizonchurch.ca, not .com, .ca. You can get your Starbucks card emailed to you. But let's jump into worship. See you at the post show. Post show, yes. Well, good morning, Horizon family. Would you stand with me wherever you're watching from this morning? We're going to sing together. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name 
is registered in heaven. Who oh, I believe, I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yes, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my The sons and daughters brought with blood and washed in water sing the praises of the spirit son and father our god will finish what he started yes our god will finish what he started this is my testimony from death rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony oh. well church if you're still alive he's still got a plan for your life so come on would you sing with me if I'm not dead, you're not done. Cause greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Cause greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Cause greater things are still to come. testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Well, church, would you keep singing with me? We're going to keep praising this morning. I will give you my praise. I will raise up my hallelujah. I will give you my praise. I will raise up my hallelujah. Come on, church, let's sing it together. I will give you my praise. I will raise up my hallelujah. I will give you my 
on, church. Let's sing peace. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break. At your name and still, call the sea to still. The rage in me to still every way. At your name and Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. And Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise and Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. One name. You silence fear.
to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you so good this is our surrender um, I just want to welcome you whether uh, you're watching this later I know we've had a couple difficulties this morning but we're so glad however and whenever you're joining us today my name is Alexandra um, I'm here for our prayer and praise moment this week and I just want to say if you do have a praise of report we want to hear it we want to hear how God is working in your life we don't always get to see the results, and that just so encourages us as a church body. So if you have a prayers report, just put it in the comments, whatever you're watching, or email for all your praise and prayer requests, prayer at horizonchurch.ca, because we want to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, send it there right now. Um, so just for this week, as I was preparing, I was reminded um, in my own struggles of of COVID fatigue and for some of you even as I say the word COVID you're just tuned out because you're done you're done with it all but I was reminded that again something that we say here a lot sorry that prayer is our first response not our last resort and that again it's still true that prayer has it and when I am in myself and in my own pride I need to humble myself before the Father and pray again it, it doesn't stop being true that we need to pray for our leaders when they make these decisions whether we agree with them or not especially when we don't agree with them we need to pray for God for ourselves and for them because God is still moving he's still working we still need to pray for the people in the hospitals we still need to be praying for our doctors we still need to be praying those who are isolated. We still need to pray for those that are feeling alone and that are separated from their families. Because it's still true that God works. A year later, it's still true. I believe it, and I hope that you believe it at home. So let's pray together. God, we don't know how you're working, but we know that you are working in the midst of COVID, God. Your name is the highest name. COVID's name is not the highest name. God, you have the final word. You are always, always working. You've never stopped working, and you never will. You're the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, you are the beginning and the end. Though we are stuck in this moment, we look forward with anticipation for what you are going to do, what you have done, what you will do, Lord. And we do not settle for second best. We do not settle for the last thing, God. We declare that we are your sons and your daughters, and we will go to 
to the throne room with our request, God. Will you break off loneliness? Will you break off the apathy? Will you break off our own pride as we deal with this, Lord, that we would continue, continue to look to you, Jesus, God. We continue to look to you. Come on, in your own home, just begin to pray out, God, I give you this, I give you that, I give you my fears, I give you my financial situation. Whatever it is, we bring it to the Father right now. And on that same vein, there was another thing I want to pray you go um, about. And as we went into this year, I was impressed with this phrase that God always keeps his promises. We see it through the whole New Testament, how faithful God is. When we get to the New Testament, the answer that Jesus was to thousands of years of questions, thousands of years of waiting, God still kept his promise to send his son to us, and he has still keep the promises that he's made to you. We talked about it last week, that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but hope is here again because God keeps his promises to you. Even in this past year where there's been a breaking and a crushing, God still keeps his promises of the good things for you. So let's just pray. Maybe you have a promise. Maybe just put your hand on your heart and say, God, I need that promise. I need you to remind me of that promise. I need you to remind me of your goodness. And God, right now I pray for all of those that are dealing with, with maybe uh, broken dreams, God, that you would remind them that your promises are faithful, God, that you are faithful to complete the work that you started, God, that you don't give up on us, and we will not give up on you, Jesus. That is our declaration today, God, that we will stand firm on the promises and the hope and the cross that Jesus was died on. Lord, we just thank you. God, we thank you for the privilege that it is to serve you. Thank you, Jesus, that you always show up, no matter whenever, God, that you will show up. God, we pray for all of our church family this week, God, that you would bless them and keep them, that they would learn and, and be guided through the rest of this service, Jesus, in your mighty name, amen. We have a kid's video for you. Thank you. Hey, Horizon fam. Hello, we're here to let you know that your kids can check out this week's Horizon Kids Sunday vlog now. Head over to our YouTube channel to watch it. We're on the final Sunday of January. All month long, we've been talking about rules for life. Play well, finish strong. The final rule for life that we look at this week is use your words wisely. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then, what you say will help those who listen. We look at how we can ask God to help us be wise with our words so that we can build others up instead of tearing them down. It's a great message to wrap up the theme for this month. We would love for you and your family to join in on the fun that we have with it today. So, make sure you check out this week's Horizon Kids Sunday Vlog. Your kids are gonna love it. We'll see you over on YouTube. Bye! Bye. Here I am. Well, welcome wherever you're watching this from this morning or this afternoon or Friday, whenever it is. We're just glad that you're here with us today as we conclude our Dangerous Prayer series. Uh, but before we do, just while I was waiting off, off stage while Alexandra was praying, which was just powerful, uh, just two words dropped into my mind and, and into my spirit, so I just want to throw them out there. One is thrombosis. Um, you can look up what it is. Uh, I had to, but that word came to me, and I just felt like that someone has had thrombosis in their body and that God's dissolving it and healing it right now. So if that's you... Just claim that for yourself and just thank God that he is, he is healing that right now in Jesus' name. And, and then also with that was liver. And I'm not sure if those two thoughts or words are connected, but if they are, great. But that you've recently been diagnosed with something with your liver uh, that, that, is gonna, that is worrying you and causing you concern. 
And so right now, I'm just going to pray for you and believe that God is going to heal that. If that's you uh, or either of those things, just let us know at prayer at horizonchurch.ca. So, Lord, thank you that you are healing right now, Jesus. Thank you that you are the God who heals in Jesus' name. So, Lord, for thrombosis, uh, for this liver issue, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, thank you that infirmity looses and that the healing power of heaven is flowing on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I guess I should explain that. So we believe that God is still alive, that he still speaks today, that Jesus died, buried, and rose again and makes all things possible. He defeated death, hell, and the grave, and, and he is also a healer. And so uh, we believe that God still speaks today, always in line with the Bible, uh, and gives words like that, and we put them out there. And if that didn't make sense for anybody, that's all right. We're, uh, we're just putting it out there and let you do, uh, receive it or not. Uh, that's great. But we've been praying these dangerous prayers, and we've been talking about it. dangerous prayers, and they're only dangerous in this sense. They're dangerous to our apathy. They're dangerous to our comfort. They're dangerous to our old ways of thinking. They're dangerous to the, the patterns in our life that have held us back. They're dangerous to things that we've held on to instead of grabbing a hold of what God has for us. And so they're basically dangerous to living life as the culture would have you live it right now. And so when we say dangerous, that's the context. It's because we believe that God wants to come in and, and come in into our lives in a real and a significant way and be part of what he's doing on the earth and that you get to be a part of that. And that's what we're talking about with dangerous prayers. A couple weeks ago, we said this dangerous prayer, which was, search me, O God, where we invited God to just come in and search and reveal anything Thing that's hurting us or, or hurting our calling or, or hurting our families or hurting our destiny and asking God to, to just remove that from us and reveal it to us so he can heal it in us. Last week, Daniel did a great job on just this prayer called Break Me and understanding that 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 is what God wants to do in us, not to break us as people, but to break our hold on the things that are holding us back so that we can grab a hold of all that God has for us. And it's, a, it's to release the control over our life and to gr let God grab a hold of us and have control in us and through us. And today we're going to go into another final uh, dangerous prayer. And I'm going to pray right now, and then we'll, we'll continue on with the rest of our message. So, Lord, I thank you that you hear. Thank you, Lord, that you give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. And, Lord, I pray for everyone listening right now that we would not hear it for someone else, but we would allow you to shape us and mold us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I don't know about you, but if you have had children, or maybe you were a child at, at one time, uh, we all were, right? You just got that. Uh, the reality is, is that sometimes they hear better than others. There's sometimes I thought my kids didn't hear. And it usually, it usually was around things like, could you load the dishwasher? Could you take out the dog? Could you take the trash out? Whatever it would be. And seemingly, Shandra or I could say these words and nobody would, would move. So we assumed that they couldn't hear. But we had learned long before that that was not always so. In fact, when our kids were very small, they would be all three car seats in the back, and, and we'd be on a road trip somewhere. We were, we were sure they were all asleep, you know, their heads hanging on, touching their shoulder, their cheek is. They are out, slobber coming out, and they'd be sleeping for a while. And we would get out our candy. You would just start to rustle it a little bit. And three heads, like they came up from the grave. There they were. They were hearing and, and ready to move and respond in that moment. Sometimes we don't hear simply because we don't want to. Other times we're distracted. I get tagged with this that I'm a selective hearer, my wife tells me. And what that, what that means is I'm not actually selecting what I'm hearing. I'm not actually hearing because she'll be talking. I'll be reading something. I'll be on social media. I'll be doing an email. I'll be watching a TV show or something. And I will hear noise. And I will nod my head. I will sometimes even say yes. And I have no idea what she just said. Sometimes we're just distracted when we're hearing. 
I'm sure that many of you, if you've done a group project before, if you're in college or, or you've been uh, at work and you've had a problem that you're trying to solve and you're brainstorming it with some colleagues and you're talking about it and trying to solve it and you finally come up with a solution and it's amazing and you think this is going to be the thing that's going to help us. It's going to be so good. And then somebody asks the faithful question, well, who's going to do it? And suddenly this room that was filled with noise and laughter and ideas and stuff goes as quiet as a Canucks Stanley Cup final winning party. Dead silent. And nobody wants to do it. We love the idea of it, but we're not sure that we want to do it. You say, what does this have to do with anything, Craig? Well, as we look at this last number of months, I think this is week 47 for us, uh, broadcasting from last March the 15th. And we have been through a lot. And we don't have to enumerate it all. We just all know that it's been a lot. I read this week that um, what, we're, what many of us are experiencing probably is like pandemic burnout. We're just tired of it. And then you add on top of that the usual January blahs of rain and sleet and and wherever you are, unless you're in Mexico or in Africa or something where it's sunny, we bless you. We're jealous of you, but we bless you. Um, There's all that going on, and many of us have experienced incredibly difficult things, whether that's things in our personal lives. Uh, Maybe you've fallen back into addiction off the wagon, and you're, ah, how did that happen? Maybe you're having family issues or marital issues, or maybe you've lost your job, or all these things that have brought pressure to bear on us and have, have caused incredibly challenging moments. And our responses have been, at times where I've talked to many people, we're just so disrupted, and we're living in the effects of withdrawing and feeling disconnected and feeling disillusioned and feeling maybe discouraged and some people maybe even feeling depressed and so that we're off course in a way. We're, our, the disruption has disrupted all of our lives. And, but what is, I started to think about this over this week as I was preparing. What if instead of letting the disruption run us, we became the ones that started to disrupt the effects of, of the disruption? What if we were God's disruption in a world gone crazy. Because this is what I fear, is that many of us have stopped hearing the call of God that we once did as clearly because of all the noise and all what's gone on and all stuff. It's caused us to step back a little bit and start to wonder, where is God and what's happening? And I don't understand what's going on. And, and we've kind of taken a step back and maybe slipped into neutral a little bit. But I have a few questions I just want to set up for us this morning. And it starts with this. What if what has seemed to be a season of demotion, God is turning into promotion? What if, it, what if that? What if all the things that have seemed to be knocking you back and putting you down have actually God's been working in the middle of them and he wants to set you up, search me, oh God, break me, oh God, so that he can promote you and move you forward? Second question. You can put it up there. It's more a statement. You could say it as a question. Don't think that God has been prepping. Don't you think that God, don't think that God hasn't been prepping you while the problems have been pressing you? Let me say that one more time because apparently you have COVID brain or something. Don't think that God hasn't been prepping you while the problems have been pressing you. And I think sometimes we're so focused on what's happening around us, the problems that are pressing us, the the issues that we're dealing with, that we don't understand that as you've been continuing to be faithful and lean into God, that he has been prepping you for what's next. It's not been wasted times. It's not been uh, times that had no meaning. It has not been steps that have no connection with the next step of what God's been doing, but God has been prepping you while the problems have been pressing you. And finally, this last question. What if God is using this disruption as preparation for your activation? What if God is using this disruption as preparation for your activation? In other words, all that's been happening along the way, what if God has been using it to simply prepare you to be activated in this next season in a new way? 
And that sets up where we're going right now, the next dangerous prayer. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 6. And Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm just going to slide that a little bit that way. Isaiah chapter 6, and Isaiah is written uh, probably 2,800 years ago or something like that. The prophet Isaiah, uh, he was an Old Testament prophet in the first half of the Bible. And, and he would stand and prophesy and share the word of the Lord to the people. And uh, we're coming into the story where the king of that time, King Uzziah, died. And when a king died, it always created tension. It always created upheaval. It always created uh, a disruption because there were pretenders and claimers to the throne, people who would want to try and get in, people who would try and destabilize what's happening. And so it, whenever a king died or whenever there was a change, there was always disruption. And in that moment, Isaiah was praying, and he had a vision of God in the moment of it. He had this vision of God moving in the middle of the disruption. And, and I, just a great reminder to us that in the middle of disruption, God is still moving. God is still on the throne. God is still uh, activating things. God is still moving his purposes forward. God is still uh, doing things in the world. He's not locked up in quarantine. God is moving. And his, Isaiah reminds of, uh, us of that. When there's disruption, it doesn't mean that heaven is disrupted. In fact, heaven is on solid ground and moving forward the purposes of God. And so when he's praying, he sees this vision of God, and then he suddenly sees himself and he says, Woe am I, a man of unclean lips. He realizes that he's in the presence of God, and he realizes how inadequate he is. He sees the sin of his life. And then God sends an angel in, in this vision and brings a, a coal off the altar of God in heaven and, and touches his lips and basically cleanses him in that moment. So he's, Isaiah is confessing and God is cleansing and finally God is calling. And this is what Isaiah heard in that moment in Isaiah chapter 6 in verse 8. It says, Then I heard the Lord ask him, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? In this time of disruption, in this time of anxiety, in this time of fear, in this time of shaking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And I said, Isaiah said, here I am, send me. And I fear that in a time of disruption, we've been so rattled, and I know I have at moments, and I've been so focused on what's going on around me that I've stopped seeing that God is sending his people, and you and me, in the middle of all the disruption, we need to see what God, who God is. We need to see ourselves for who we are and see God can use us in this time. And here's a dangerous prayer. Send me. Send me. And in the middle of all the chaos and all the disruption and all the confusion, God is still calling people who will disrupt the disruption with his power, with his love, his goodness, his kindness. Because all that's going on in the world, the world needs what Jesus, who Jesus is. And he comes in through the people of God. People like you watching, maybe you don't know Jesus but you know that you need him. Maybe you know Jesus and you know the people around you need to see the kindness of God, need to see the love of God, need to see the hope of God, need to see God. And, say, and that's why who will go? Send me. Here I am. Send me. That's the pattern of God. He cleanses us and then he calls us. Whom will I send? Whom will I go? In a season of challenge and grief and pain and, and, and difficulty and sometimes overwhelm, it means that I, I say, God, will you send me into it? I need your help in my world right now. But you know what? Sometimes we get, when we get too focused on just what's happening in our world, there's not grace for that because we are made to move forward. We're made to follow God into all the world. And we are more blessed when we give than just when we receive. And, if, and please don't hear me saying if you're struggling emotionally or mentally that you don't need to, to go see a counselor. You do need to go see a counselor. If you need to, you need to go see the doctor, go see the doctor. If you need medication, get medication. And, but don't also underestimate the power of taking action when you move out of spaces and places that have paralyzed us and, or, or minimized us or seemingly uh, 
brought us to a place of such disruption that we don't see how we could do anything anyway in this moment. But Because this is the way that God works. When we surrender to God's call, it usually means we surrender our own plans, our own our own. Um, our plans, we surrender what, where we're going to live. We sur- I remember when Shanda and I were dating and I was trying to feel out, to, trying to ask her, like, you know, I think I'm going to be a pastor one day. And, and I said, what, the only thing, I can't promise you a lot, but I can say this to you, that we don't get to decide where we live. That's, that's when we follow God, we don't get to decide where we live. We're going to follow him wherever. And thankfully, Shanda said, that's what I want for my life. And, and for all of us, when we surrender and say, God, send me, that means where I wanted to go, I, Lord, I surrender that. How I wanted to go there, I surrender that. What I wanted to do when I get there, I surrender that. The, 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 the house I wanted to live in, I surrender that. The town I wanted to live in, I surrender that. And I just say, Lord, send me, and it's open-ended. That's why it's dangerous. All those things I just mentioned are all the things that most of us hold dear and most want to control. And when we say, they send me, we're saying, God, your way is better. You know, we sang it today. Your way is better. That's a theory. But in this prayer, when we pray it, we actually are challenged to believe it. Your way is better. Where you're taking me is better. How you're taking me is better. Where I'm, what I'm going to do when I get, get there is better. What you're asking me to give up is nothing compared to what you want me to grab a hold of. Your way is better. And surrendering. And I want to look at all, there are three responses to God's call of disruption. Will we disrupt the disruption? And each one of us has to evaluate where we are. But how do you respond to Jesus? How do you respond? Maybe you're this one, number one. It's here I am, I'm not going. I think if we're honest, some of us have said that. Here I am, I'm not going. But this is a Bible story, actually, and it's about a man named Jonah, and you might have heard of Jonah and the whale, or Jonah and the big fish who got swallowed. Well, he got swallowed because of this. Here I am, I'm not going. The word of the Lord came to Jonah in Jonah chapter 1, and he said this, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away. Say ran away. Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for the port. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. He knew the need. He knew that God wanted him to go disrupt the disruption of the enemy in Nineveh, where there was so much wickedness. They were a wicked, wicked people, and history records them as one of the the most brutal of dictatorships in history. And here Jonah is being called, hey, I need you to go there and preach. He is supposed to go about 800 to 1,000 kilometers towards the east, northeast, towards where is around where present-day Mosul, Iraq is about 1,000 kilometers to the east. Instead, he got into a boat and was headed to Tarshish, which is on the Atlantic coast of Portugal, about 4,000 kilometers away. So he was not just like, I'm not going to go. I don't really want to. He is like, I am going the absolute other direction. I want nothing to do with that. I want to get far away from where that is happening. It's like being called to Fort St. John and saying, nope. I'm not going to go and get in your car and driving to the end of the Baja down in Cabo San Lucas. And, well, at this time of year, I would probably choose the Cabo over Port St. John. But he just went the total the other way. He knew that God had called him, but he said, here I am. I'm not going. Do you ever find yourself fighting God? Do you ever find yourself resisting where God has called you, what he's asked you to do? Maybe you've had moments like Jonah, unwilling to be generous when God's nudged you, unwilling to take a step and, and, and speak up when he's asked you to. I think we've all been there at different times. Of course, none of us probably have gotten in a boat and gone the other way, but I think some of us have probably dug in our heels a little bit and said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. Or we, or we, when God texts us, so to speak, we leave him on red. We don't just we just don't respond. 
And we have trick our and we trick ourselves and say that God knows He's He knows my reasoning and we know God understands why we're saying no to Him. He knows I'm really busy and you know all the things. But Jonah found himself in that position where his own desire for a time won over God's plan for his life. And that Jonah had a break me moment where God took him and broke his stubbornness and broke his willfulness so that what Jonah was grabbing a hold of he could let go of and follow God where God was sending him. And it was a beautiful story of transformation. But it wasn't easy at first. Second way people commonly respond. Here I am. Send someone else. And I think most of us have probably had those moments. When the Lord saw that he had gone, uh, this is about Moses. And Moses essentially said that in Exodus chapter 3. It says, when the Lord had, uh, saw that he had gone over to look at the burning bush, the famous story of the burning bush, if you don't know about that, go look at Exodus chapter 2 and 3. Jonah saw a bush burning, but it wasn't burning up, and he was like, whoa, that's pretty crazy. So he turns aside, and when he turns aside, God says this to him. God called to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. And then God tells him that I've seen all the problems that are going on in, in Egypt. There's such disruption for my people. They're in slavery. They've been under bondage. They're just incredibly challenging right now. And I've heard their prayer, and so I'm sending you. And uh, Moses says, um, but uh, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Again, who am I? I am literally a shepherd. I have been a shepherd for 40 years. I've been chasing the backside of goats and getting lambs to follow me, and that's all I've been doing. I'm wanted as well. I'm wanted for manslaughter in Egypt as well. And going back there, I don't think that's a good idea for me. Who am I? I make excuses. And then he continues to make, make excuses. He says, how will they know you sent me? So God says, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some miracles. Okay. Well, what if they don't believe me? Well, I'll, I'll do this thing where with your staff, you throw it on the ground, it'll become a snake, and then when you'll pick it up, it'll turn back to a staff, and people will know that miraculous thing that I'm with you. Oh, okay. Um, but I can't speak well. And then finally he says this, but Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord, in verse 13. Please send someone else. What excuses are we making today that stop us from following and saying yes to Jesus? I think COVID, we were talking about this today. COVID has become a catch-all, and sometimes it's really real. But sometimes it's just an excuse. I can't because of COVID. I'm late because of, I wasn't there because of, I didn't do it because of, like whatever. But there's also this reality that some of us have legitimate excuses in our mind. Things like this, I'm too old. I'm too young. I don't have the resources. I don't know how. I'm not that good at that. But God never calls perfect people who have it all together. He never calls people because those kind of people, actually, when they feel like they have it all together and come and offer their services to God because they're so amazing, they go to the prayer one and prayer two before they get to this one anyway. But God, the reality is, is this. All through the story of the Bible, we see God using people that had every excuses. I love how he used a prostitute to, 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 to save a, a nation. I love how God used people who, were, who sometimes drank too much and God still used them. I love how God used people who were sometimes depressed and God used them. People who were far too old and should have been washed up and God still used them. People who they said, I'm too young and God says, I'm going to use you. People who, who were discouraged and God still used them. People who suffered with doubt and God still used them. People who had all kinds of issues and all kinds of excuses about why they couldn't give their yes to Jesus. And God said, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to come and I'm going to use you use you, and, and you're, you've been born at the right time in history. You're needed right now. Uh, my hand is on you for good. My anointing is more important than your ability, and I'm going to develop you, and I'm going to grow you, and I'm going to encourage you, and I'm going to build you, and I'm going to use you to disrupt the disruption that's going on in the world, because the world needs to see that there's a hope, and that it's found in Jesus, and it's seen through you. 
you don't follow qualified, feel qualified, you're in good company. Because the message of Jesus cuts across the time and space of this cultural moment where the world thinks that you have to have so many followers and have to be popular enough and have to have the right political pedigree to have anything to offer. And Jesus cuts through all of that and says this, I will use whoever I will use. Uh, in fact, he said this in uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 27 through the Apostle Paul, that God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things uh, that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. So if you feel a little powerless this morning, if you feel a little discouraged this morning, if you feel a little broken this morning, if you feel like you can't hardly get yourself up this morning, if you feel disconnected this morning, if you feel discouraged this morning, if you feel anxious this morning, whatever the issue is, God chooses you in not because of where you are, but because of who he sees you. And he's able to move in you. He's able to transform you. He's able to take you in your weakness and his power come in and do what only he can do. Here I am. Send me. Here's the final one. Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. Send me. Only you can pray that prayer for yourself. Other people can be praying for you, but when you pray that prayer from your heart, God hears that prayer. Isaiah 6 and 8, we read it already. Then I heard the Lord saying, asking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. Don't just send Craig. Send you. Send your family. Send you into all kinds of places. Because if you're a follower of Jesus, you're part of God's answer for the disruption in our world right now. That's why we go through the process of send, search me, break me, because God is working in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure so that he can send you as, a, as an ambassador of his love, as an ambassador of his goodness, of a, as a, a shining light in a dark world. Yet this prayer seems to be the hardest to pray because this prayer, we will know if it's being answered. See, when we see search me, we don't know what's going on inside of us. We don't from the outside. When we say break me, we always, can't always tell what's happening inside of someone. But when someone says send me, we know if it happens. It's the most challenging one to pray because there's an action. It has this yes. Many years ago, we developed this phrase about giving God our Yes. Because when, when we develop the habit of giving God our yes, anything is possible. When he says, send me, yes. But when, when I gave God my yes, I had no idea the places that it would take me. Minister on Vancouver Island in a couple of communities there. I've been all around the world. I've been on street ministries. I've been uh, in, in other nations. I've been in all kinds of places, in difficult seasons, in challenging seasons, seasons that brought me great tears, seasons that brought me great victory. But being and learning and still learning to give God my yes, how can I grow a yes attitude? What would it look like if you and I went around into our world with a sent attitude. That we were sent. We were not just going to work. We were not just going to, to school. We were not just going for a walk in a neighborhood. We were not just living by the neighbors. We were, but we were sent there by God strategically for his purposes. What if, how would that change how you looked at your situation? If you said, God has placed me here and I have the privilege of representing Jesus, what would it look like if you told God you were available where you were, whatever, whenever, wherever, however, what would it look like if my answer to a request from Jesus was always yes? You know, sometimes we put down, oh, he's a yes man or she's a yes woman. I want to be a yes man to Jesus because his way is better. How can you always have a yes in your spirit? Number one, Isaiah shows us we need to recognize our need for a fresh encounter. 
Recognize our need for a fresh encounter. Pastor Daniel and I were talking about this and how we are, we are a church that we continually bring you back. What God is asking you to do, what Jesus is asking you to do is impossible without him. It's impossible. You can't change yourself. You can't, you can't suddenly become better. You can't suddenly be, be transformed by yourself. But right now, we need a fresh encounter. And some of us, I know, because even I heard it on the pre-show, it's harder to engage through a screen. It's harder to get in there and just really encounter the presence of God. But if you're a follower of Jesus, you need to come in and say, "With Lord, as I ask you to send me, it's an acknowledgement that I need you. I need you to help me. I need you to fill me afresh. I need a fresh outpouring of your spirit. I need you to come into every space of my heart, every place where I don't even know, and continue to build in me, encourage me, strengthen me, uh, rehabilitate me, renew me, restore me, whatever you need to do. I need a fresh encounter with you. And so I encourage you to not pull back. We need his presence. I stood on this stage almost a year ago. We need his presence more than stage presence. And you might remember me saying, we need to be more than people that get fed on a Sunday. We need to be people that know how to read our Bible. We need to be people that know how to pray. We need to be people that know how to reach out. We need to be people because in this season, more than ever, the gift, if you would say it this way, has been that it's made us realize our absolute desperate need for God and for one another. I need a fresh encounter. I need to experience his presence. Remind yourself of who God is. Sometimes you just need to sit and think and re remind yourself and recognize, I need a touch, Lord. I remind myself of who you are, of your great goodness and your great kindness. Second thing is recognize that his grace is greater. See, when, when Isaiah came to the went through that process. He saw God, and he said, oh, whoa, I see the Lord. Had an encounter with God. Then he had this moment where he recognized his sin, but he had an encounter with God's grace. In all our inadequacies, in all our failings, in all our struggles, in all our weariness, in all, all the stuff that you feel right now, recognize that his grace is greater. His grace is greater. Grace is not just for salvation. God, I thank you for forgiving my sin. Grace is the power to live today. And I access is just ask. Jesus, I need your help. I need, I need you to move. I need, I need your strength. I need you to move in my life. Because when I understand God's, my sin, I understand God's goodness. And I remind myself, you've been so good to me. And I would encourage you to take a moment even right now and just remind yourself, You've been faithful, God. You've been merciful to me. You have protected me. You have forgiven me. You have changed me. And instead of self-centered prayers of what God can do for me, suddenly we begin to pray overflow gratitude prayers of God, use me. God, send me. God, I'm available for you. God, would you do something through my life? Use me for your purposes. Number three. That's where it leads us to. Recognize the appointments that Jesus has for you. Now, I know that pretty much anywhere in the world we're at various stages of being locked down in our homes. It's limited. And sometimes we might say, well, when COVID's over, I'll do such and such. But this also is a moment where there's opportunities. You know, I've, I've noticed over this last number of months I'm pretty focused. My plate is pretty full with ministry and family responsibilities and obligations and staff and, and the church and the college and all that kind of stuff. And, and I've noticed something. When I was preparing this, I recognized that I had lost something in this past season. I've been so focused on my stuff and the problems I have to solve and the issues that I've got to work through and the people that I've got to lead that I've lost a bit of my attentiveness to the appointments of Jesus. Those moments where he says, Craig, I need you to do this. I need you to speak to that person. I need you to send an email. I need you to pay for that person in line. I need you to call someone or I need you to talk to your neighbor or whatever. And I've been so wrapped up in my stuff that I've been not living the way as much as I'd like to, the way that God's calls me. Because one of the ways prior to COVID is at the end of my quiet time, I would just often just sit there and say, Lord, is there someone you want me to encourage? And, and he would drop names in, and I, and I felt like a, a little word would come, and I would send it to the person. I did that 
multiple times a week. And, and always uh, people, thank you. How did you know? Well, God knew, and I, God just wanted to encourage you. But I, I, I want to get back to being more attentive to the appointments of heaven, of being more attentive to where God might want to send me, right where I am, in the spaces and places that I occupy, lifting up my eyes a little bit out of what's just happening in front of me. Because what this wonderful opportunity is, COVID has shaken everything up. It's given you also an opportunity to reevaluate and say, step back quietly and breathe with a fresh whisper. Here I am. Send me. What does it mean to be sent for you? So I think sometimes when we pray that, we think, oh, God's going to send me to Tukta Yaktak in the Northwest, in the Nunavut or Northwest Territories, or I'm going to have to go to some strange place. I have a hunch that most of us, God needs us to be sent right where we are, right where we are. <coughs> God, use me to bless someone today. Show me what to say to my coworker, to my children, to my parents. Show me who I can be generous with today. Where can I serve in some way in a project? Maybe I could still serve at night shift because it still goes on. Or I could, I could send some food to a mom who just had a baby or, or buy some diapers for a family. Maybe, maybe God would use you right where you are. Not, not some other place, but right where you are. And it would be surprising to you how God just wants to breathe on where you are where you're, what you're doing right now. I remember when I worked in a, for the, a, a private nonprofit, or a private nonprofit in uh, working with kids who were in prison and on their way to prison or on their way out of prison. And I had so many opportunities as people would share, oh, I'm struggling with this or whatever. And my response would be, can I pray for you? And I don't think ever anybody said no. They were like, wow, would you? I'm like, right now? They're like, maybe not, but you can pray at home. Or sometimes they let me pray for them. Maybe God would send you to tithe and give generously. Maybe God would challenge you to call your neighbor and check up on them and just see. Maybe he would want you to be a, a leader of other people and gather some people over Zoom. Maybe, maybe he'd want you to be sent to Tuesday prayer meetings a little bit so you can be built a little bit every Tuesday night. But it'll be a step at a time, here a little, there a little being faithful with what he puts into your hand and being surprised at what God does with it. Here I am, or here am I, send me. Not here I am, no, I'm not doing it. Not here I am, send somebody else. Here I am, send me. And then as you grow in it little by little, he may begin to have a bigger ask of you to give away maybe your car. Maybe he'll say, would you be part of a church planning team to another community? Maybe he would say, uh, I want you to give $5,000 to that, that family over there. I don't know. But here's the thing. What if God is using this disruption as preparation for your activation? Because when God uses you, you will want more. More fulfillment comes, more joy comes, more life comes, because you get to experience the joy it is of being used by God, of participating in Him, with Him, in disrupting the disruption. That's why we pray dangerous prayers. Search me, O oh God. Break me, O oh God, so that you can send me, O oh God, and be one that disrupts the disruption of our world, that brings heaven into earth, wherever we are, send me. Send me. You know, some of you need to pray the, the, da the first dangerous prayer of inviting Jesus to be the forgiver and leader of your life. You say, I don't know, Pastor, if I'm right with God. Today is your day. Now is your moment to, become, to get, make your life right with God. Seven little words. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that will begin. If you pray that prayer from your heart, you begin a journey of repentance and returning to God where God can begin to move your life forward in ways that you never dreamed possible because he's the God who does exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. The biggest dream that you've had for your life, God wants to do more in and through you. And for those of you, 
So if you've prayed that prayer, please just let us know. Prayer at horizonchurch.ca. And if you've surrendered your life to Jesus, I invite you to do that. This is the day. And maybe there are some of you that you know you're walking with God, but it's been a difficult season, and we're, and we're praying for you. Let us know if you need prayer. We want to pray with you. Prayer at horizonchurch.ca. But I want to pray for all of us. Maybe, maybe some of us need a fresh encounter. Maybe some of us need to recognize God's grace a whole lot more and stop being so hard on ourselves. Maybe some of us need to recognize the appointments that Jesus is setting up for us. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to be done, and we're going to go to the post show in a moment. Jesus, I thank you for those that are watching today. Father, I thank you that you see them as so needed and necessary for the world today. Your hand is on them for good. Your anointing is upon them. And, Lord, in every space and place where we feel less than and we feel inadequate, we feel uh, angry, we feel frustrated, we just submit that to you, Lord Jesus. And we say, Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I pray for fresh encounters for my brothers and sisters that are watching. Lord, that in our times as we set aside and, and are still, that we, that we will know fresh that you are God. Lord, I'm praying as well that there be a fresh realization, Lord Jesus, of your grace, that we, we don't have to do this on our own, that you are with us, you're for us, but you're empowering us to win. And Lord, finally, that you would help us to see with our eyes and hear, in our, hear with our spiritual ears what you're doing, Lord Jesus, where you want to send us so that we could be ones who disrupt the disruption of our world. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. We'll go to the post show. Right. Amen. Come on. So good. So good this what morning. What a great way to end off our Dangerous Prayer uh, series of talks. Yes. What's one thing that stood out to you, Sharon? There were actually so many good things. Thank you, Pastor Craig. That was amazing. Um, one of the things that stood out to me was, what excuses are we making today that stops us from saying yes to Jesus? That really um, hit home for me. And then how do you respond to Jesus when he disrupts? You know, those are those are two great things to ponder and talk about as a family. I know I'm guilty of the here I am, I'm not going, and here yeah. I am, send someone else. Send someone else, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. I love the one thought of what if we saw everywhere where we lived, where we worked, not as coincidence, but as assignment. Your neighbors, your workplace, where you shop. Mm -hmm. Uh, such a great word. So I really, really want to encourage you guys to take some time. And for those just joining us now, uh, we will be reposting the whole service as a yes. whole. So we know there's been some interruptions with the network. Um, so we'll be reposting that later today. So be watching for that. Uh, the whole service will get posted. So if you want to, you kind of missed halfway through, there'll be worship. We'll be up there. and It'll be great. Yeah. But we have one more giveaway. We do. Our Valentine's Day, our preparation, preparation giveaway. Preparation for Valentine's and just so we Day. Know, we, we did this just to, you know, Give a little prep for all those people that maybe it sneaks up on you. Yeah. Two weeks. This two, is your two-week two week, reminder. Two-week notice. It's coming. You know, for your, and again, uh, this is free. <laughs> all you young, adult, all young adults out there, you still need to call your mom on Valentine's Day. That's right? true. Give yes. her a call. Say you love her, your grandmother. She's, yes. You know, you still can contact her, all that good stuff. So yeah. two-week notice. But in addition to that, here's my question. You ready? I'm ready. Are you, ready you guys ready? In addition to being the unofficial patron saint of love, what occupation is Saint Valentine also believed to be a patron of? So what was Saint Valentine's other occupation? occupation. Looking for that, you can Google that. It's pretty cool. I'll put it this way. Pastor Craig has dabbled a little bit in this uh, with some of his brothers. That's kind little, of giving it away. Little, I oh, that's yeah. I, I guess that was. You did kind of give it away. Quite a broad. Well, well you hint. guys still have the opportunity quite to. Quite a broad uh, hint, but I was what, actually pretty surprised. Yeah, I, I did not know this. But I did not know either. Yeah. So what was Saint Valentine's unofficial occupation, occupation. Uh, before he was known as the patron of love? Oh, Naomi. Uh, Naomi Hunt. Beekeeping. Beekeeping is correct. <laughs> Now, now, Caleb, on your cloak, because I think as uh, a yes. priest or in the monks, they would have, a lot of them actually historically did some beekeeping. It's um, true. I saw that, learned that off of watching Robin Hood. Oh, and yeah. And so Robin Hood talked about <laughs> basically. Uh, yeah, so uh, Naomi, Naomi, you can email Daniel at horizonchurch.ca to get your $6 Starbucks card because $5 just doesn't cut it sometimes. That's Anyways, good. thanks so much for joining us. Uh, again, we'll be posting the service later, uh, the whole service. Yeah. 
And make sure you share it with somebody because this was a really good one to yeah. share. Um, invite somebody to the church next week. We'd love to see you guys again yeah. next Sunday. We're always yeah. here at 1030. 1030. See you there. See ya. Bye.